worship service, this worship opportunity online from St. Luke's Lutheran Church, Conover, North Carolina. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The eastern bluebird has an average wingspan of about 10 or 11 inches and weighs about one ounce. The red-tailed hawk has an average wingspan of four to five feet and weighs in at two or three pounds. The bald eagle that soars above our neighborhood probably has a wing fan, wingspan between six and eight feet and likely weighs 10 to 14 pounds. Wandering albatrosses can weigh more than 20 pounds and have wingspans around 11 or 12 feet. These ocean liners of the bird class may cover more than 75,000 miles in a year. They generally live to be about 40 years old but can live longer, reportedly the oldest living albatross is about 70 years old. Sadly, an article in the Smithsonian Magazine News from last November states, the divorce rate among albatrosses has been climbing over the past 15 years. Albatrosses typically mate for life raise one chick together each year, but the divorce rate has doubled. Divorce is the term ornithologists use when a bird pair survives to the next breeding season but fails to reunite and reproduce. In short, the article reports warmer water temperatures have meant less food 
and more time searching for food, so less time to mate, worse health for parents and chicks, and more breakups. In Samuel Taylor Coolidge's poem from the 18th century, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, the old sailor tells a tale of a ship stuck at sea. At one point, the poem laments the plight of the sailors, water, water everywhere, nor any drop to drink. So 97% of the water on the earth, salt water, unfit for human consumption. Much of the fresh water is still frozen in glaciers, although some of that is melting from the rising sea temperatures and contributing to the rise in stress and the divorce rate of albatrosses. So about 1% of the Earth's water is what we humans drink, use to bathe, flush, rinse and spit at the dentist's office, wash our clothes, our cars, and our cauliflower, and baptize. One percent. Yet the image is of abundance. Water poured out for you because of God's love. In the Isaiah passage, the ancient prophet reminds the refugees of God's presence. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. We are not to forget those who have lost lives in hurricanes and floods or ignore the effects of warming waters and rising sea levels. Drought in California, Arizona, Nevada, and other states have prompted rethinking about how water is used nationwide. What water is to be available for hydroelectric power, for cooling computers, for playing golf? And what water is to be available for the fish and the farmer? The 2002 Water Poverty Index ranked the United States 31st out of 147 countries with a score of 65 out of 100. Stories from the Appalachian Mountains around us to the streets of Detroit continue to show us the importance of this simple bond between one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms. Into all of this, we hear again Isaiah's, do not be afraid, do not fear. And we remember that Jesus stepped into the water of the river Jordan to invite us into the water of God's salvation. Luke, the gospel writer, says very little about the baptismal scene. Quote, when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized. That's all Luke says. We don't get images of elbows and noses underwater, of waterlogged tunics, or reports of whether the people removed their sandals, or any kind of conversation between Jesus and John. Instead, Luke focuses us on the after effects of baptism. 
Jesus is pictured in prayer. And as he prays, he hears the affirmation from God. You are my son, the beloved. And then Jesus, having stepped out of the water, steps into his ministry and work of salvation. We too can focus on after effects of baptism. What is the after effect, the verbal response of your baptism? Not just back when the water was poured over your head or when you were dumped and raised in the newness of life. But the after effect, the verbal response today of the reality of baptism or if you're not baptized, of the call of baptism. The call of baptism from God. Our baptism and the affirmation of our baptism invites us to continued action, a verbal response living among God's people, hearing God's word, sharing the supper, proclaiming the good news in word and deed, serving people, following the example of Jesus, striving for justice and peace. That's a lot of verbal action. Prophets, poets, disciples, including every one of us, know there is a whole lot of walking and waiting and waiting to do. Dry and parched, soaking wet and thirsty. The after effects are all around us. St. Paul names it in Galatians 5. Faith, working through love. What about in the midst of flood and fire? What about in the aftermath, standing in the ruins of places like Mayfield, Kentucky, and other hometowns that have recently witnessed and passed through water and fire and tornadic hell breaking loose? What about those lying in hospital ICUs or nursing homes? Or what about divorcing albatrosses, lamenting teenagers or young adults screaming at God? When water is pouring over the edges when the flames are licking their chops. Isaiah and John point us to presence. Presence. The God who created you, the God who formed you, the God who called you by name, that God is present. Jesus has stepped into the water and stepped back out. We are cradled, marked, loved. God is present. You are loved. Amen.
invite you to receive the blessing. May you find rest, enjoy the sunrise, appreciate the beauty around you, and know that God loves you this morning and always. Amen.